wildest dreams, Jordan? Did you did this scenario ever occur? Never. I mean, it, I'm, I don't think anybody, and include myself. I mean, it's just like last year. I mean, you, you know, for me, I mean, I had no idea. I mean, same thing last year. I mean, a, I mean, Brent and. Edwin and all those guys were, were leading and catching big bags, and man, same thing was going on, you know, uh, this week. And I, you know, you can't plan on winning. I mean, I, I was not planning on winning this tournament. I mean, I just wanted to fish a good tournament and, and fish the way I, I wanted to fish. And, you know, as, as far as I fished this week, I mean, it's not, it's not typically the winning patterns or um, you know how I was catching some fish you know I had a lot of spotted bass I mean I had probably half spotted bass I mean that typically doesn't win tournaments here so uh, but it, it was my it was you know it was my best stuff and that's just how I approach this tournament and I fish new water every day and uh, you know I had fun I mean, that was, that was my main goal coming in here, you know. A lot of people ask me, if, you know, if I was nervous or, uh, you know, had any more pressure coming into this tournament. But, you know, it was really the opposite. I just wanted to have fun and, and fish the way I, I thought that, I, you know, it was my best chance of doing well. And that's what I did. All right. Very good. Next question. Have one right here in front. Jordan, a number of people have won the Bassmaster Classic. Very few people have won two. Winning it back to back at your age, how does that make you feel right now? It, it's really unbelievable. I mean, I, I mean, some people know this out there. I have not won an Open. I've not won an Elite Tournament. I'll have now, I got two of these. <laughs> and, I, I mean, it's something about the classic. I mean, my first time out at Gunner for me, I had a chance there and just didn't, pay, didn't pan out. But this tournament, I don't, I don't know what it is, but it's definitely something special for me. And it just worked out the last two years. I mean, and then nobody could have could have wrote the story that went down today, you know, and it was just meant to be. I mean, this tournament's so prestigious. I mean, like you said, I mean, winning at one time was a dream of uh, that I could never thought I could ever top it. I mean, that's what I said um, going into this tournament. I'm like, how can I top last year? I mean, how can I top, you know, last year as far as my whole year? I mean, the, the classic. And I, I didn't think I could, but... Um, I don't know. I got close to it, anyways. But it was just—it's just special. Really, it really is. I mean, just everything worked out. It was just meant to be, I guess. All right. Next question. Jordan Dan Basler with Midwest Outdoors. What were your winning lures and patterns? Um, I started every morning on. Uh, it was a little feeding spot. It was a, it was a deep hole. had a, had a little flat on it. It was just found it on Google Earth um, before you know practice, and uh, just looked like a good spot. Um, I fished there in the mornings and, and caught you know some spotted bass that probably weighed in five of my total fish off that spot. Um, you know, weighed in one there today, and I was catching them on a jerk bait. Um, it was uh, a bone color jerk bait. I just got confidence in. I've thrown it for a long time, and um, you know that was I, I was calling those fish out of deep water. And I was sitting 35 to, to 40, casting in about 10, and uh, you know there was some bait on my graph, and it was just it was just a key spot where I could pull up and get you know start out the morning and get bit. Um, I didn't know that going into the tournament, but that's 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 where you know. It was it was definitely a key spot for me, um, and I had a few. I had another place that was a little road bed that had a school on them yesterday, and I, I, I caught all my weight pretty much off that one spot. It was just this road bed with um, a little depression, in it, and there was just the school spots there. I mean, they were not giants, but you know they were two and a half pounders, 
and uh, so that was definitely key. I caught him on a Strike King Rage Swimmer as well the first day, doing the same stuff in the same places. Um, you know, all spotted bass. I did weigh in one largemouth doing that off the place I started. And uh, after that, you know, and that was just kind of a bonus for me. Um, you know, after that, I was just running. I mean, I was just running. And it, I mean, I didn't have a game plan. I didn't have something that, that I didn't have a spot. I just fished new water every day, fished places I've never seen, and just uh, fished a lot of water, a lot of docks, you know, this week that didn't, they were not productive. I mean, I don't know how many I fished without getting bit, but it was a lot. But I just thought that that was my best chance in this tournament. And uh, I knew on this lake that, uh, you know, bow docks were going to be a player because they always are on any, usually any past tournament here. And, uh, you know, I was, I was skipping a Strike King Ocho, and I had some shimmy sticks in the bow as well. They're both green pumpkin, green pumpkin blue. And I was throwing on a little um, VMC hook. They're not, they're not a sponsor of mine, but I, I got it. Bought some of those this past week, and uh, I never lost a fish on that Nico rig. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I weighed in today. I rolled into a pocket just because I got a bite there in practice, and I caught two on a chatterbait and some grass. Um, so, I mean, that was just, I, I caught them on five different baits all, all week, and every day was something different. Just kind of, you know, fish the conditions. But today, I, I knew with the sunshine this morning, it was hot. I mean, I was hot on my first spot, and I knew, you know, the boat docks were going to be a player. I just didn't know where. And, you know, I, I ran into a couple places that I hadn't been. It just didn't feel right, you know, still no signs and went down towards the dam and, and rolled into one place that uh, hadn't fished, you know, I fished some docks to the mouth of it and, uh, you know, was, was fishing docks in the mouth and I, I went, I decided to go in this one pocket um, and pretty quick got bit, caught my biggest fish and, uh, you know that told me i mean that was my first bite in probably two and a half hours of, of doing the dog deal and you know that was a good sign two more docks later i caught a two pounder which wasn't a big one or anything but it, it gave me a sign and uh started seeing fish under all of these boat docks i mean it was just loaded i mean it was literally i mean tomorrow if it was a sunny day i mean it would be awesome to go in there I still may do it, but that <laughs> that pocket was just, I mean, there was big fish suspended under every dock. I mean, it was just amazing. I mean, I, I was, it was like a dream just to see that. And I really thought at the very end of the day, though, I had about a five pounder eat a worm uh, right when I was coming in and, and it just came off. I just it took my worm, but, um, but there was big fish just all in there cruising, I saw them cruising the banks, you know, there was just, a, just one of those special places and I just pulled in the right spot. All right, very good. Next question. Jordan, you touched on what I wanted to know about a little bit at the very first of that last answer. You said you were at 45 casting to 10, saw some stuff on your graph. So with the changes in conditions so much from the beginning of pre-fish to this last day, can you explain a little bit what the role of your electronics were and figure it out? Yeah, you know, I've been, uh, you know, running grants since I started. Um, and this year I got HDS 16 carbon at the, uh, at, at the dash, and I got two um, carbon 12s at, at the bow. And, um, you know, that, that setup for me is just confidence. I mean, I, I can clearly see what I'm looking at. And, you know, that spot in general, you know, had, had a lot of bait and, um, I, I was seeing fish coming up, you know, streaking on the graph, and you know when I saw that, I kind of backed out a little bit. And you know, the key with the spots were when I'd catch one, you know, I'd bring them in, and my graph would light up. There would be falling in. So when that kind of happened, I, I typically backed off a little bit, and 
you know, it seemed like those fish stayed around that area, and I was able to capitalize and catch a couple like that too. But um, you know, the structure scan to me is the clearest, and uh, you know, I found a lot of offshore places this week like that. Um, and ended up fish, fishing several of them in those road beds, and I mean, it's it's definitely a key to me. Um, ran different trails every day, different color trails. I made sure. In, in practice and in the tournament just to see how many pockets I went in. I mean, if you saw my graph, it was literally, I mean, it is all over the lake. I mean, I, I ran a lot looking, just just searching. I mean, and, I mean, I went in so many pockets and I got trails in and out everywhere, so. All right, next question, very good. Hey, Jordan, uh, Charleston from fishhawk.net. Um, I know a lot of uh, brothers and other uh, partners on tour share information and patterns and he would go as far as to split winnings. I was curious if you and Matt uh, have that kind of relationship or is he just getting a nice dinner out of this? Yeah, uh, I definitely can buy him dinner out of this. But, uh, yeah, we, we talk a lot. We talk in practice. We talk in the tournament and, uh, you know, just to get an idea of, you know, how we get bites. We don't share spots or anything like that. I honestly didn't see him all week. You know, fishing on the water. Um, I, I, I lied. I rolled in one pocket uh, the day before yesterday or yesterday, and uh, he was in there. But that was the only time I saw him. You know, we both fished similar. We, we both were catching some spotted bass in practice, but, um, you know, the, the boat dock deal, he, he caught the, probably, I think, the biggest bag today off, you know, doing the same thing. I mean, that's just the way we like to fish. Um, you know, Smith Lake sets up similar to this and you know we feel confident with spinner rod light line and, and boat docks so that's just kind of how we both approached him and you know he did really good so all right alan see so in a way you kind of jump fished your way through this tournament didn't you i mean there was really no defined pattern there there really wasn't i mean I, and i've heard that before on this lake um and I, I didn't, you know, my pre-fish was not, I mean, my practice four days was not good. Um, you know, I got a bite here, about bite there. And, um, you know, I, I tried to learn from those, but there really wasn't, uh, there wasn't a lot to it. Today was the only day that really made, you know, the spots were on specific stuff. I mean, they were on, you know, two different little road beds and that, that, I mean, they stayed consistent. You know, they were there every day, whether they were big. But the, the largemouth, I mean, they're all over the place. Second so. and last question, what rod, reel, and line did you lean on most today? Yes, so um, my main setup for the, the, all the big ones today and the six-pounder I caught the first day was on um, a Vapor 7.2 medium-heavy rod. I was throwing um, a smoke, the, the new smoke reel, and the smoke inshore reel that I have, I've used for five, six years. I don't know how many, every year I've had them. Um, it's a blue reel, it's, uh, you know what I'm, which one I'm talking about. Higher speed, gear ratio. Uh, I was throwing eight pound Tatsu. It, it was my leader line, um, 30 pound Smackdown braid. And uh, that lot line, you know, around those docks is kind of scary, but I, I didn't break off a fish, I didn't lose a fish. Yeah, I just fished clean all week and, you know, like here. Yeah, with the, with the worm, you know, with the Ocho, and uh, it was all spin and tackle. All right, very good. Dana? Jordan? Uh, we all know how hard you work and how much time you spend on the water. We see you at Gunnersville all the time, those of us that live in the area. Right. What is it about your mental makeup? Can, do you feel pressure? Do you just go out there and say... I, d I do. I really do feel pressure sometimes. And, you know, I'm more anxious than anything going, you know, sometimes like this tournament going into it. I mean, I had I had no idea what I mean. I had a few bites here, a few bites there, but that's sometimes the thing that be you know that that I I, I think I feel like I've lost a few tournaments that way. This is mentally getting out of it, and you know uh, Chris and I talked about it a lot. 
you know, going in this tournament um, was, uh, you know, working on that, you know, working on my mental game and, uh, you know, not worrying about what anybody else is doing, you know, not worrying the dog talk. I mean, that can get you. But the more time, you know, that I, that I spend on the water, I feel like the more comfortable I get, you know, the more, you know, confident. I mean, we all, I mean, I know I struggle with it, you know, especially, you know, you have really tough practice or, you know, you can get mentally get out of it. I mean, it, it happens to a lot of people. I mean, it happens to me. But, uh, you know, this week I, you know, stay true to the course and, you know, try to be, you know, work on that part of the game. Has it sunk in yet? Do you realize no. the air this puts you in right now? The names that you share, no. there's only three of them. No, it, it's crazy. I mean, I'm, I'm mentally shocked right now, honestly. I mean, I'm, I'm just, uh, I, it's, it's hard to put into words, you know. Like I said, this is my second tournament win. I mean, it's crazy to, to say that, but it is. I mean, it's just, it shouldn't be like this, but um, it just worked out, so. All right, very good. And we may have time for one more question. So we got it. All right, here we go. Uh, Jordan Kent Brown, Ultimate Bass Radio. Kind of following up on Deanos. You know, we talked at the media about the coolest things you got to do as a classic champion. And you were kind of saying, you know, that's over. I can go back to fishing the Elite Series. Uh, <laughs> so, now what? I don't know. I guess I'm going to retire now. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. You know, it's, I mean, the, this past year was just a blast. I mean, I was really busy, but I mean, it was just uh, so much fun going to different places and the people I got to meet. And I'm sure this year will be different, but it's just, it's just incredible, for real. It's, it's, it's awesome, it's special, for sure. All right, we got, we're gonna have to get him over to the Champions Toast, but let's give one more round of applause for 22 Geico Bass Master Champion, Mr. Jordan.